Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of That's Railroading, where we bring the railroad to you. <laughs> we love doing it, too. Okay, what we're going to do today is uh, change some rail. I'm going to go through the steps and show you how, what all we do to change the rail and uh, show you some clips that I've taken at various rail changes that we've done. Um, show you that through there, too. Okay, so to give you an idea of uh, how we change rail here. All right, <laughs> glad to have you with us. It's cold this morning, 19 degrees. Wow, <laughs> here's uh, 5th of December. Okay, let's take a look at this. Get right in. All right, we're gonna change this rail. You can see it has some pretty bad shelling in it we're here right in the full body in the curve so there's actually uh, three rails that we're going to change here in this full body I've gone in the past and uh, come out here and mark these and uh, what we got to change is two more down there where you can see so here's why here's how we do it when we come up here uh, obviously we have to take the the joint bars off so um, we'll take the joint bars off and, uh, both sides of the rail. Uh, well, let me start back up because the day before we'll come up here and measure this. All right. And then we'll go up and try to find a piece up there. And we've been, uh, that that'll match in it. And when you are doing the, the measuring of the rails, you got to make sure, uh, you're you're going to set your rail back in at, at close uh, within 20 degrees or so 25 degrees of the ambient temperature of when you measured it uh because you don't want that rail you don't want to measure it when it's real cold and uh then put it in when it's a lot higher temperature because that rail is going to expand on you all right but uh so we'll take the joint bars off and we'll check the joint bars for a lot of wear on the inside here or right here especially in the centers where they wear them a lot if there's uh, en enough wear on there we'll put new joint bars on we take the bolts out all the uh, six here and the six bolts up there we'll put all new uh, bolts in also next what we're going to do is uh come along here and start pulling these spikes now you notice i got two rail holding spikes here and one rail holding spike here what we do here and that's an anchor spike and some people call it a gauge spike but what we do have always done obviously the, the uh, spikes got to get pulled on both sides of your joint bar so you can get the joint bar out but like in here i'll pop these two up on the inside just about that high and then these rail holding spikes on the outside I'll uh, pull all the way up out. Now, it doesn't really matter which side you pull all the way out or which side you leave just popped up a little bit. Um, usually, if I've got two on one side and one on the other, I'll pull the one all the way out. Okay? And we use our claw bar for that. To pull the spikes out with. I wish I had a spike lifter. It's a special tool. I, I don't have one, or I'd show you that. I requested it, but it hasn't showed up. Anyway, uh, then we come along and knock the anchors off. So we have a guy coming knocking the anchors off. So once we get our anchors knocked off, the, the uh, rail holding spikes pulled all the way out, then the grapple truck can get a hold of it. And I'll show you some examples of that here later in the video, how he does that and kind of like twist the rail over and then he can throw it out and uh, put the new stick in. But before he puts the new stick in, one thing we'll do is come along here, if needed, where the anchors were and dig that out so we can get... Uh, you know our new anchors back on we got a hole to put under there also we'll clean off all the tie plates if this ballast is up against the bottom of the rail then that gets chipped out too uh 
because you don't want that ballast up there right against the base of the rail in winter time that uh, that could cause some ice jacking of the rail so a lot of railroads they like uh, an inch and a half to two inches actually in ideals situations below the rail for that ballast <clears throat> we don't get that critical here but uh you know if it's up against there we do clean it out then we clean our tie plates off all right next we'll come along with where these spikes have been pulled up and fill that hole with a product called shore spike that uh, we used to use tie plugs uh this is sure sure spike we'll get a little bit out here and show you it's, if you watch my spike video i talked a little bit about this it's like a granulated powder and it does uh It does really good at uh, holding power and also for uh, sealing those holes up. Uh, some railroads use <coughs> like a glue, uh, and I believe it's called Spike Fast. So if you go along and you see a bunch of yellow, looks like glue spread out all over there. Um, I know that that's what that is, is that Spike Fast. Okay. So then we're ready to set our rail back in. I'll show you some pictures of that. Uh, we'll go along here and drive our spikes down. Put our joint bars on. We'll make one end. Keep that loose. The bolt's loose. Come up here and try to make the other end in case we got to move that rail a little bit. Uh, that's why we keep that one loose down here. We can move it a little bit. Once we get all our bolts in the holes, then we can tighten the bolts up and come along and start spiking okay we'll spike get everything spiked down put our anchors on and we're done haha <laughs> that's how we change rail and then i always come like to come back you know uh after the first one or two trains runs over this and check it out so all right we'll be back with more don't you go anywhere because <laughs> we got a oh there's one thing i didn't tell you one thing I did not tell you, I have to tell you, because uh, once we get the new rail set in there, then we'll come along and we'll check gauge. All right? That's pretty important. Forgot that. But, you know, we'll check gauge. Oh, I don't know, maybe every five, six feet along here we'll check gauge. And if we have to set, set the gauge in, obviously we'll have to pull our anchor spikes out, plus the two that are popped up here for however long, pull that in and re-gauge it. All right, we will be back. Well, here's two rails that we changed on uh, Saturday. Friday, we changed three rails, and Saturday, we changed four rails. All, uh, all running live track, working the live track. <laughs> that means the train's, train was running. So, uh, a couple things I didn't tell you is, number one, if need be, when we set these rails in here, we will grind this new rail down to match here. Now this is the no of that. bunch of old guys out here today. <laughs> That's railroad. Here. Now this one we didn't need to. It's almost a perfect match. And we grind also bevel this edge off here a little bit. Bevel it and bevel this a little bit. But that wasn't needed to be ground. We also check the railhead gauge face to make sure that that is a smooth even transition there. Okay. Um, and I didn't tell you, we also put, always put new anchors on. We never put the old anchors on. Those old anchors that we've got have been here since 1975, and they get weak. So we always put new anchors on. And another thing we, uh, most generally 
use new rail. I'll put new rail in. If uh, they're willing to buy me new rail, I'm willing to put it in. I like to change rail, and I like to do the job right with new materials. Uh, also, when I'm putting these spikes, I didn't tell you also, these rail spikes in out here, I use new spikes out here. I never use, once we pull a spike, I never reuse it. Because <laughs> uh, they're willing to buy me new stuff, I'm putting it in. All right, and... Uh, Last along, we'll come along and we'll clean up the, uh, clean up the, all the material, like the old anchors and the old bolts and everything. So I'm going to clean that up here when I get off of this. I'm on my way up track, doing track inspection here this morning on Monday morning. All righty. Ah, uh, so we'll get you some, uh, some shots of us, uh, changing rail here. So I uh, wanted to add all that in. Here, curve 16 tag. That's a pretty bad shelling on this rail. No. Last week we changed the rail in the rain. Today we're changing in the snow. <laughs> 10 degrees this morning. It's lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. original rail 1975 we're in a tangent held up pretty good held up pretty good okay that was easy I'll tell you what job was pretty good I like having him out here Almost as much as Lucky. You know Lucky? No. Okay. Yeah. Nice. You wait till I tell John what you said. <laughs> I'll tell John what I said. <laughs> I teased him all the time when he was here. He didn't say that. Made fun of him. That was half of the fun of a bit coming out of here, making fun of John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll get it all there. Okay. That's it. Hands are on top of the rail. Get a bar and help you there. Boy, you gotta come this way. Well, he knows that. A little bit more. Boom! Yeah. Okay. That was easy. All right. Well, <coughs> somebody didn't measure right. So, okay. That warm me up though, anyway. Some of this snake, uh, I don't know. It's uh, not real good stuff, some of it. It's like a I don't know if it gets old. It gets like a really black tar type in it. Yucky, yucky, yucky. Yucky. The uh, regular snake, when it's fresh, it's all pretty nice and clean. Yeah, it's got tar in it too. These might be old cans. I don't know. I don't know. We'll get it together. We'll get it together. As soon as we can get a drift pin started, we're home. Okay. There 
There you go. I thought maybe he's gonna pull the anchors off for us. Okay. Okay. Ha! Got it before I could. Nice. There we go. That's seated in nice. Okay. One more. Get that chip out of there. Nice. That came out easy. And that's what John, if Jonathan had the same kind of saw and Noodle had that belt to give it to me. So I'd say that's the belt for it. Playing over there. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. Okay. Okay.